Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love economics. The United States, Japan, Mexico, and Canada are all open economies that trade with each other. As trade partners, these nations import and export goods and services, labor, financial and fiscal capital, natural resources, technologies, and disposable income. You know, pretty much everything included in either the current or capital accounts. However, each of these nations uses a different currency from the others. This means that every time a trade transaction is made between any of these nations, the nation who is exporting or selling their goods must be paid in their own domestic currency. I mean, what use does an American firm have for yen or pesos or Canadian dollars when the US dollar is the only currency accepted in the United States economy? If a consumer in Japan, Mexico, or Canada wants to buy an imported American good from an American firm, they're going to have to convert their currency into the US dollar. If a trade transaction requires consumers to convert one international currency into another, the conversion of currency will take place in the foreign exchange market. The foreign exchange market is the location where international currencies are bought and sold by economic participants at various exchange rates. This is the foreign exchange market. It's comprised entirely of the supply and demand for an international currency, and each currency around the world has its own market. Through voluntary exchange, the supply and demand for an international currency sets an equilibrium exchange rate in the foreign exchange market. This rate is the price at which one currency can be bought with another. Changes in either the supply or demand for a currency will change the exchange rate in the foreign exchange market, which impacts the value or international purchasing power of the currency, the price of imports and exports, and ultimately affects a nation's trade balance. Before we analyze the foreign exchange market, let's take a closer look at exchange rates. The exchange rate is the price at which one international currency can be exchanged for another. In essence, it tells us how many units of one currency is needed to buy a single unit of another. A currency's exchange rate also tells us the value of that currency compared to other currencies in the open global economy. For example, let's compare the US dollar and the British pound. Suppose the exchange rate for one British pound in the foreign exchange market is two US dollars. At this exchange rate, American consumers who convert their dollars into pounds to buy British imports will receive 50 pence for every dollar. This means that imported goods from Great Britain are twice as expensive for American consumers as they are domestically for British consumers. If a British car is sold for 20,000 pounds in the open global economy, American consumers will actually pay $40,000 after they convert their dollars into pounds at the current exchange rate. By contrast, British consumers who convert their pounds into dollars to buy American imports will receive $2 per pound at this exchange rate. This means that imported goods from the United States are half as expensive for British consumers as they are domestically for American consumers. If an American computer is sold for $1,000 in the open global economy, British consumers will actually pay 500 pounds after they convert their pounds into dollars at the current exchange rate. Either way you look at it, at the exchange rate of $2 per pound, the British pound is twice as strong as the US dollar in the open global economy. When the exchange rate for a currency increases, it's become more expensive in the Forex market, and it now takes more of every other currency around the world to purchase it. This means that the currency is appreciated in value in the foreign exchange market, and is now stronger compared to all other international currencies. For example, if the dollar price per pound increases to $4, this means the pound has become more expensive because it now takes twice as many dollars to buy it. As a result, the pound has appreciated compared to the dollar, and is now four times as strong as the dollar in the open global economy. At this new exchange rate, a British consumer will only pay 250 pounds to purchase an imported $1,000 American computer in the open global economy. When the exchange rate for a currency decreases, it has become less expensive in the Forex market, and it now requires less of every other currency around the world to purchase it. This means that the currency has depreciated in value in the foreign exchange market, and it is now weaker compared to all other international currencies. For example, if the dollar price per pound decreases to 50 cents, this means the pound has become much less expensive because it now takes only half a dollar to buy it. As a result, 
The pound has depreciated compared to the dollar and is not only half as strong as the dollar in the open global economy. At this new exchange rate, a British consumer will have to pay £2,000 to purchase an imported $1,000 American computer in the open global economy. Blimey. Let's establish some facts that we can safely assume about exchange rates. First, every single international currency in the open global economy has a different exchange rate when compared to every other currency. For example, the dollar exchange rate for the pound usually hovers around $1.40 to over $2 per pound, while at the same time, one US dollar can buy as many as 110 Japanese yen. So, exchange rates can vary depending on the currencies of comparison. Second, when comparing two international currencies to each other in the Forex market, if one currency appreciates in value, it's safe to assume that the other currency has depreciated and vice versa. Third, when a currency appreciates or depreciates in the foreign exchange market compared to a specific currency, it's safe to assume that the currency has appreciated or depreciated compared to all other international currencies as well. Now, back to the foreign exchange market. The foreign exchange demand curve represents the quantities of an international currency that all domestic and foreign consumers are willing and able to purchase at various exchange rates. Anyone who needs or wants international currency can demand that currency in the foreign exchange market. If a consumer or a firm needs to complete a transaction with a trade partner who uses a different currency from their own, they must first purchase the currency of their trade partner with their own in order to complete the purchase. Remember, it's the responsibility of the importer or buyer to convert their currency into that of the exporter or seller. So, it's the importers who make up the demand for a currency in the foreign exchange market. Notice that the foreign exchange demand curve is downward sloping, implying that the relationship between exchange rates and the quantity of a currency demanded is inverse. This means that as the exchange rate rises, foreign consumers are less willing or less able to purchase the same quantity of a currency and therefore buy less. As the exchange rate falls, foreign consumers are more willing or more able to purchase the same quantity of a currency and therefore buy more. For example, let's assume that the exchange rate for one British pound increases from two US dollars to three US dollars. American consumers who buy British imports will have to give up a greater quantity of US dollars in the exchange, and so they'll want to avoid paying a higher price to convert their currency. This causes a decrease in the quantity of British pounds demanded and a movement along the foreign exchange demand curve from point A to point B. If the exchange rate for one British pound falls to one dollar, American consumers who buy British imports won't have to give up as much of their own currency in the exchange, and so they'll want to take advantage of the lower price to convert their currency. This causes an increase in the quantity of British pounds demanded and a movement along the foreign exchange demand curve from point B to point A. The foreign exchange supply curve represents the various quantities of an international currency that all domestic and foreign sellers are willing and able to sell at various exchange rates. Anyone who holds international currency can supply that currency in the foreign exchange market. Whether it be banks, individuals, or international currency speculators, suppliers of an international currency can sell that currency in the foreign exchange market at the exchange rate to anyone who needs or wants it and can potentially earn profits. For example, if I'm a currency speculator and I buy Russian rubles at a very low exchange rate, I can wait until the value of the ruble rises on the foreign exchange market and then sell my rubles for a profit. Notice that the foreign exchange supply curve is upward sloping, implying that the relationship between the exchange rate and the quantity of currency supplied is positive. This means that as the exchange rate rises, domestic and foreign sellers are more willing or more able to sell the same quantity of a currency and therefore sell more. As the exchange rate falls, domestic and foreign sellers are less willing or less able to sell the same quantity of a currency and therefore sell less. For example, let's assume that the exchange rate for one US dollar increases from 10 Japanese yen to 15 Japanese yen. Currency suppliers will earn a greater quantity of Japanese yen in the exchange and so they'll want to take advantage of the higher price to convert currency in order to earn greater profits. This causes an increase in the quantity of US dollars supplied and a movement along the foreign exchange supply curve from point A to point B. If the exchange rate for one US dollar falls to five yen, currency suppliers will earn a lesser quantity of Japanese yen in the exchange and so 
they'll become less willing or less able to supply as great a quantity of U.S. dollars with a reduced chance to earn profits. This causes a decrease in the quantity of U.S. dollars supplied and a movement along the foreign exchange supply curve from point B to point A. Fundamental changes in economic conditions can cause economic participants to demand or supply a lesser or greater quantity of international currency at every exchange rate. This is caused by a change in foreign exchange supply and demand, and it is visualized by a shift of the supply or demand curve for an international currency in the foreign exchange market. There are four determinants of foreign exchange supply and demand. A change in foreign tastes, a change in trade prices, a change in income levels, and a change in capital flow. A change in any of these four determinants will cause a fundamental change in either the supply or demand for international currency, which will impact exchange rates, comparative currency values, trade balances, and aggregate economies around the world. A rightward shift of the foreign exchange demand curve indicates that the demand for a currency has increased in the foreign exchange market, and a greater quantity of that currency is being purchased, no matter the exchange rate. Higher or lower exchange rate? Doesn't matter. Foreign consumers are buying more currency. A leftward shift of the foreign exchange demand curve indicates that the demand for a currency has decreased in the foreign exchange market, and a lesser quantity of that currency is being purchased, no matter the exchange rate. Higher or lower exchange rate? Doesn't matter. Foreign consumers are buying less currency. A rightward shift of the foreign exchange supply curve indicates that the supply for a currency has increased in the foreign exchange market, and a greater quantity of that currency is being supplied, no matter the exchange rate. Higher or lower exchange rate? Doesn't matter. Domestic currency suppliers are selling more currency. A leftward shift of the foreign exchange supply curve indicates that the supply for a currency has decreased in the foreign exchange market and a lesser quantity of that currency is being supplied, no matter the exchange rate. Higher or lower exchange rate? Doesn't matter. Domestic currency suppliers are selling less currency. And you're gonna love this. There's really good news for all you AP students out there. Changes in the determinants of foreign exchange will cause a change in either supply or demand that will cause an identical change in the exchange rate for the currencies you're analyzing. Unless your question says supply or demand specifically, you can choose to shift either the supply or demand curve to get the correct answer you're looking for. I know, right? Let me show you. A change in foreign tastes will fundamentally change the supply and demand of a currency in the foreign exchange market. This refers to the spending preferences of international consumers for imported and exported goods and services. It's actually pretty straightforward. Suppose that British tourists decide that it's a good time to travel to the United States. As Brits travel to America, They'll want to purchase greater quantities of American goods, which will require them to convert their pounds into dollars in the foreign exchange market. This will increase the demand for the U.S. dollar and decrease the demand for the British pound in the foreign exchange market. In order to purchase the U.S. dollars they need, the British will hand over their pounds in exchange, effectively injecting greater quantities of pounds into the forex market as they withdraw the dollars they've purchased. This will decrease the supply of the U.S. dollar and increase the supply of the British pound in the foreign exchange market. As the demand increases and the supply decreases for the dollar, the exchange rate for the dollar rises in the foreign exchange market. This means that the dollar has appreciated in value relative to the pound and every other currency in the open global economy. As the supply increases and the demand decreases for the pound, the exchange rate for the pound falls in the foreign exchange market. And this means that the pound has depreciated in value relative to the dollar and every other currency in the open global economy. A change in trade prices will fundamentally change the supply and demand of a currency in the foreign exchange market. This refers to the price of imported goods compared to exported goods. And again, it's pretty straightforward. Suppose that U.S. price levels rise relative to India, making Indian imports cheaper than American goods. American consumers will want to buy cheaper Indian imports in greater quantities, which will require them to convert their dollars into rupees in the foreign exchange market. This will increase the demand for the rupee and decrease the demand for the dollar in the foreign exchange market. In order to purchase the rupees they need, Americans will hand over their dollars in exchange, effectively injecting greater sums of dollars into the forex market as they withdraw the rupees they've purchased. This will decrease the supply of the rupee and increase the supply of the dollar in the foreign exchange market. 
As the demand increases and the supply decreases for the rupee, the exchange rate for the rupee rises in the foreign exchange market, meaning that the rupee has appreciated in value relative to the dollar and every other currency in the open global economy. As the supply increases and the demand decreases for the dollar, the exchange rate for the dollar falls in the foreign exchange market, which means the dollar has depreciated in value relative to the rupee and every other currency in the open global economy. A change in income levels will fundamentally change the supply and demand of a currency in the foreign exchange market. Suppose that the national income level rises in the United States and American consumption of domestic and foreign goods increases. Now suppose that the United States and Japan are trade partners. American consumers will want to buy Japanese imports in greater quantities, which will require them to convert their dollars into yen in the foreign exchange market. This will increase the demand for yen and decrease the demand for the dollar in the foreign exchange market. In order to purchase the yen they need, Americans will hand over their dollars in exchange, effectively injecting greater sums of dollars into the foreign exchange market as they withdraw the yen that they purchased. This will decrease the supply of yen and increase the supply of the dollar in the foreign exchange market. As demand increases and supply decreases for the yen, the exchange rate for the yen rises in the foreign exchange market. This means that the yen has appreciated in value relative to the dollar and every other currency in the open global economy. As supply increases and demand decreases for the dollar, the exchange rate for the dollar falls in the foreign exchange market. This means that the dollar has depreciated in value relative to the yen and every other currency in the open global economy. A change in capital flow between trade partners will fundamentally change the supply and demand of a currency in the foreign exchange market. Capital flow refers to the purchase of interest-bearing assets in the financial investment component of the capital account. When foreign investors purchase domestic assets, a country is experiencing inbound capital flow. When domestic investors purchase foreign assets, a country is experiencing outbound capital flow. However, whenever an asset is purchased, it must be bought in domestic currency, which will cause changes in the Forex market. Suppose that U.S. real interest rates increase to a level that is higher than France, and suppose that the United States and France are trade partners. With a high real interest rate, American assets are more profitable relative to French assets, attracting inbound capital flow into the United States. French investors will want to invest in American assets in greater quantities, which will require them to convert their euros into dollars in the foreign exchange market. This will increase the demand for the dollar and decrease the demand for the euro in the foreign exchange market. In order to purchase the dollars they need, French investors will hand over their euros in exchange, effectively injecting greater sums of euros into the foreign exchange market as they withdraw the dollars they purchased. This will decrease the supply of the dollar and increase the supply of the euro in the foreign exchange market. As the demand increases and the supply decreases for the dollar, the exchange rate for the dollar rises in the foreign exchange market. This means that the dollar has appreciated in value relative to the euro and every other currency in the open global economy. As the supply increases and the demand decreases for the euro, the exchange rate for the euro falls in the foreign exchange market. This means that the euro has depreciated in value relative to the dollar and every other currency in the open global economy. And that's the foreign exchange market. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy the channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in macro and microeconomics, as well as quick macro and micro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my international capital flow video, or you can click here for my macro minute video on fixed and flexible exchange rates. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on You Will Love Economics.